What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Optimal EV. Today, we're giving you a build guide and rundown on the new 2022 Bolt EV. All right, everyone, so we're gonna give you some quick highlights on the Bolt EV first before we get into the build guide. Uh, we have an estimated EPA range of 259 miles, and then we have a zero to 60 time of six and a half seconds with 200 horsepower. Yeah, pretty quick, not bad for the price. Uh, let's jump into the build. All right, so when we go into the build, you're gonna see a nice website here. We got a nice little electric Bolt logo showing up, and we have the one LT versus the two LT. Those are the only two trims that you can get on the Bolt EV. Um, and we're also going to be doing a rundown on the Bolt EUV in our next episode. So first, price. What do you think about the price, Sam? Uh, for the price, not too bad. Thirty-two thousand um, dollars. You know, that's just for the base package. Pretty much what you get is what you get. Um, you know, that's built in with wireless Apple CarPlay. It looks like and wireless Android Auto, which are pretty big things for tech right now. Um, we can take a look at those interiors a little on, but I think for the price, it's pretty good. Yeah, and uh, I know something that I always like to mention when talking about wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. Sometimes people do run into connective connection issues, so maybe some people prefer plugging in uh, the vehicle. Personally, I like to plug in instead of using the wireless, but uh, some people also prefer wireless, especially if you're using a wireless charger. Right. So uh, just some key highlights from the 1LT to the 2LT. I just want to show you, Sam, just the differences in looks. Okay. Um, there's, there's no difference range-wise. If you go to the 2LT, it is around $3,000 more expensive. But the only difference is standard. Uh, when you click the differences, at least in the looks, it's going to be just the wheels. So as you look here, and then uh, you'll have a small change in the mirror cap. Right. Um, and then you can't really notice on the top part here, but there's a change in the mirror, the rearview mirror. So okay. uh, I'm not sure too that's... much of a drastic difference. Yes, exactly. It really comes down to the options if you think it's worth getting the two LT versus the one LT. Right. So we're going to start with the one LT, uh, go over the options, and then come back to the two LT, give you our recommendation, and then score everything. Obviously, both have sa uh, standard safety features, and then we're going to click into the build. We're going to get into the exterior. We have seven different color options, which is pretty uh, good variety. Um, some exotic colors in the blue and the red, and then a lot of standard, uh, you know, neutral colors like the grays, the blacks, the the whites, the silvers. Right. Uh, one that I thought was pretty unique is this ice blue metallic. It is uh, different, and it kind of does show that EV, um, you know, vibe almost. Yeah. I definitely get that vibe too. Um, EVs like to have, you know, a little bit of an off color compared to others. Mm -hmm. um, Especially blues, like an off blue or right. off white. Yeah. Kind of like making a statement. It's yes. a good, it's a good color for sure. What color would you prefer on, on the car out of the seven? Um, I think I'd definitely go with that, that ice blue. The ice blue. Um, yeah. Maybe red on this car too, but. Yeah. The red and blue don't look bad. I think the red is more my preference. The blue right. is a little too vibrant for me. Right. Um, but it does make the trim look pretty good. So something I, I like. And of course these all come at additional prices. Yes. Yeah, so the metallic 395, 495 for the red. And then these are all standard at the top. So the only ones you're paying for are the, the more vibrant colors as we mentioned. Gotcha. Are those two different sized wheels that we have there? No, they're actually the same size wheels. So you still get 17s. Um, I think really the, the 295 you're paying for is just the visuals. So you get that bicolor, gotcha. um, which is standard in the, the 2LT, which is gotcha. nice. Then we have our 120 volt portable charging cord, which uh, is you know standard on the car. Next, we come to the interior. And as you can see on the standard 1LT, there's really no change you can right. make. So it's just the standard jet black cloth seat. So you wouldn't be able to actually uh, contrast any kind of interior color with the exterior. It's just the black. Right. If you're looking for um, a leather option here, I believe that is in the upgraded package. Yes. You'll be able to get that in the 2LT as an option. And right. I will be showing you that. If the interior isn't, you know, a deal breaker for you, I would definitely start with this package. Um, it seems to be that you're saving pretty much a lot of money on just uh, appearance for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and what's nice is, again, like we mentioned before, the standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's something that isn't standard in a lot of vehicles these days. So uh, hopefully we start seeing that soon where everyone's including that and it's yeah. not uh, a package. So most most companies, though, are coming with a standard, which is nice. Yeah, definitely uh, a drawback if you don't have that um, in a 2022 car for sure. Yes, exactly. And then so one thing I noticed, um, I don't know if you did, Sam. I mean, obviously, you're really the average consumer um, try, trying to look into these cars. Right. Uh, in the left side here, you're going to see it's a maximum range, uh, an average, and then a minimum. So I find that really cool. Uh, this is with a full charge, but it kind of shows you what your possibilities are for your range, depending if you're either a sporty driver or a more conservative driver. So I really like that. Yeah, accurate range is definitely something that I think is a pretty underrated feature in most electric cars. Um, it's you know comes down to just knowing exactly how far you can go with that charge and whether or not you're going to get stranded 
um, out on the road. Yeah. And again, obviously this also, um, you have to look out for weather. So, you know, hot weather is usually better for the battery and cold weather. You have to make sure the battery is warmed up. So, um, you know, preconditioning that battery is definitely important. Right. Right. I actually didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, uh, next we're gonna go to our packages. So this will kind of give us a, uh, some add ons that you can put on the car. As you can see, $495, the driver confidence package. Um, so it does come with the standard safety features, but it does not come with the rear park assist. So it'll park the car for you, um, you know, backing into spaces, rear cross traffic alert. So if you are backing up uh, and a car is oncoming, it will alert you that the car is coming so you can stop and, you know, not uh, crash into anyone. So definitely nice to have in, in parking lots. And, you know, if you're doing city parking, um, also something that's really important, important yeah. to consider. And this is definitely a car that will be great for the city. It's small. You can get into spots easily. It kind of compares to like the I3 or the Kona. Um, plus another important feature is the lane change alert with side blind spot alert. So, or blind zone alert is what they call it. Right. Kind of like your blind spot detectors. Exactly. It's just, cool. you know, the, whatever they like to put either a triangle or some kind of car marking in the mirror or on the outside of the mirror. Awesome. It's going to show you if someone's in your blind spot. So, you know, make sure you don't go over another lane. Personally, I don't actually really use blind spot much. Even if I'm in a car that has it, I don't even pay attention to it. Right. I kind of uh, position my mirrors the right way so I can definitely see anything. Yeah. You know, I've I've caught myself doing a uh, little bit of both. Um, I think it's it's always nice to have great visibility in a car. So when you do turn around and look that you can make sure nothing's there. Um, some cars offer better visibility than others. And I think in the ones that lack that visibility, this type of feature is really important. I agree. And what's nice is it seems like the Bolt does have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of glass, so you can see a lot around you, um, especially in the rearview mirror here. It's not like a normal crossover where you can't really see behind you. So, I like right. That. All right. So now we have the comfort and convenience package. We're going to check out what this uh, adds on. So we have our heated driver and front passenger seats. Obviously, great for uh, us in the Northeast and yep. whoever is in any cold kind of climates. So uh, I use it all the time. I love it. And then also we have our automatic heated leather wrapped steering wheel. So. Great option. I know um, a lot of people that I talk to will never buy a car without a heated steering wheel. Yeah, so. it's a pretty underrated feature. If you haven't had it before, uh, you know, driving with numb fingers or cold hands is just not a great time. Not super great grip on the wheel. Um, it's always better just to have something, you know, to warm your fingers up when you're driving in those cold temps. Yeah, and especially I have bad circulation in my hands. And I think for someone who has bad circulation, it's actually great. So <laughs> it definitely helps with that. Definitely a good, uh, good thought there. And then we also have our auto dimming inside rear view mirror. It uh, just helps you at night if uh, someone has really bright lights. Uh, with all the new LEDs coming out and laser lights, it's definitely uh, something that will help you with your vision. Um, and then, as you can see on the bottom, it says may require additional options. Um, and what that means is just that we're adding the driver confidence package. So okay. you, won't so you be able need, to get this. just to clarify, yeah. So you need all of the packages pre the uh, convenience and comfort package in order for this to be applied? Yeah, so you just need the, there's only, since there's only two on the EV. Yeah, you'll only just push you just the plus, the, the you're previous. push confirm, it's going to say driver confidence package, gotcha. comfort and convenience, going to add all of it, and then the net price is going to be fourteen forty, bringing the car to thirty three seven thirty. That's not too bad. Um, I really do think that those two packages only being priced at basically $500 and $950 are pretty reasonable. Um, just basic technology packages you're getting there that I think are pretty much necessities for most people driving in any type of four season weather. Yeah. And I've seen in other, other brands, um, I've seen it cost more for heated seats. I've seen it and, and steering wheel. I've seen it cost less. So it's really kind of right in that, that market, uh, price. And then on the bottom, which, uh, normally companies will have additional, you know, a la carte options, but, um, Chevy really kind of, you know, stuck to simple with, yeah. with the EV, which is kind of cool. So you get most of the features in the car already. You don't have to do too much to, uh, you know, you know, raise the price ten thousand dollars, right? Uh, just to get the, the options that you want. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the additional accessories on most cars. Uh, they're typically overpriced, and I would always go with a third party option if possible. Yep. Um, not too much of a necessity in my book. I agree, and uh, as you can see, we have our floor mats. You know, our, our standard accessories, and usually, if you go to WeatherTech, you can get them a lot cheaper. But some people do prefer the branded uh, all weather mats, and uh, obviously, whatever your preference is, you should go for. So, right, if you're willing to spend the money. <laughs> So then we're going to go to summary and it's just going to give us our final price with 33730 and as you see that's adding on the 995 destination uh, freight charge which is just you know the production of the vehicle and kind of just an extra charge for the company to add on. Not too bad. No, so 33370 for or 730 for a full um, EV vehicle these days is definitely a good price. Uh, I'm sure leasing it is a great number and uh, you know 250 mile 259 mile range not terrible right but uh, definitely for the the size of the vehicle can get you around town which is nice all right everyone now that we went over the one LT and got the price and all the options we're gonna go over the two LT and see what the differences are 
All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the 2LT. Um, Troy, do you mind giving me just like the major differences between the 1LT and the 2LT? Yeah, so basically from the, the jump, uh, you get the standard wheels, which on the previous model, when you click, you're gonna see the chrome. Now you get the bicolor standard, which obviously you're paying for. It is a $3,000 uh, more increased price on the vehicle. Okay. Plus you're gonna get the leather seats as standard in the car. And uh, the lane change and blind spot is something you're going to get with uh, the surround vision. Oh, part. nice. So not anything extra that you have to add into any packages. Gotcha. On this part, yes. But you're going to eventually have to add in some packages. There's always uh, packages. Uh, there's always packages. Okay. <laughs> Exterior, same colors. And again, only one wheel option, which is standard. That makes it easy. Yep. Go into the interior. Uh, same exact interior look. But in this point, we're going to have our jet black perforated leather. So one thing with the Chevy Bolt in general, you get black. No matter what color you want, you're getting black. And, and I guess you also can't opt out of leather. You know, if, if there's anybody who is happens to be a cha or sorry a uh, fan of cloth seats, looks like you cannot opt in for that option. Nope, you're getting the perforated leather no matter what, and uh, you're paying for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now, as you can see, some of the packages have changed and some have gone away. The reason for this is because the driver confidence package is now gone. Um, it's included in the vehicle, plus um, the other tech package that we were looking at, that's included as well. So these are kind of like two advanced packages, you could say, because they not only include those previous features, but more that aren't available in the one LT option. Exactly. Cool. So the, basically what you're paying for in the infotainment package is the Bose Premium 7 speaker sound system with the subwoofer a wireless charging tray, and the two USB charging only ports for the rear passengers. So you get the charging ports in the front, plus you'll get them in the back as now. Nice. As well. Pretty convenient. Yeah. And one thing that's crazy to me is that for five ninety five, you're getting the wireless charging and a speaker system. The that's, speaker system alone, I feel like, is, is probably valued around $500. That's, so that's very, pretty good package. That's very, very cheap. Um, I know. Obviously, I'm familiar with BMW, uh, and they actually charge eight seventy five for Harman Kardon, uh, the upgraded speaker system, and their wireless charging tray alone is $500. Wow. So, pretty good deal yeah that's you know almost cutting that price in half actually less than half and then also you're going to be able to option the adaptive cruise control which is also very cheap at 375 most companies will uh, offer it for 1500 to even 10,000 if you go to tesla right um, obviously the technology is definitely different when it comes to the different companies but uh, price wise definitely is pretty good i think you definitely have to be careful here with this option um, certain car manufacturers are really good at this feature. Certain car manufacturers are not, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, some are doing it a lot better than others. Agreed. So definitely do your research when uh, purchasing the car. We're kind of just giving you a rundown to find what the best car is for you. If you're looking up videos like this, you're definitely doing the right thing. Yes. So next, all we have again is our standard accessories or that you can get on most cars. And uh, we give you a kind of rundown on the during the 1LT on that. Cool. So with these options added, we're going to push confirm. And actually, if you look here, again, just like the previous package, you have to get both. So it is a tier package. So the tier one is on the left, tier two is on the right. right. You must get uh, tier one if you're going to get tier two. No picking and choosing here. Exactly. Go to summary. And again, add in that destination charge, you're at 36165 So no matter what, you're at around $3,000 increase. And it's basically just because you're getting those packages standard. Nice. So if you don't want the leather, you probably want to go with the, the standard package. Yeah, right? agreed. So now we're going to hop into our scoring sheet and give you guys kind of a breakdown of what we think about the Bolt EV. Cool. Let's do it. All right, everyone. Here's our scoring chart. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of this, but we're also going to leave this in the description. So if you have any questions about any of the scores, you can always leave them down in the comments. So basically on the left side, we're going to have our model, the Chevy Bolt. We're going to have our names to show you who scored what. And then we're going to start with range, charge time, price, safety, features, top speed and acceleration, tech, the interior, the exterior, and then the warranty and the tax credit. We added an extra point for the frunk just because me and Sam are huge fans of the frunk. And then that brings it to a total score of 100. As you can see on the Chevy Bolt, we both scored it a 51, but we did change up based on the category. On the right side, we're going to have our score key, which shows you how we're rating these vehicles. And in the future, we're going to have more vehicles on this whole chart and kind of ranking them based on each model. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and go check out this chart if you want to see it more in depth. All right, everyone. Next, we're going to be reviewing the Chevy Bolt EUV, which is the SUV version, just called EUV. Uh, so that concludes our video on the 2022 Chevy Bolt EV. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. We're going to leave the scoring system page down in our description. So if you have any questions on that or anything else, just let us know. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys in the future.